Extubate's yeah. not a trivially easy thing to do in that same patient population. I've ever been involved, I, I think, and this is not a large number, but virtually any time I've ever been involved in someone trying to intubate and extubate in the ED, it's turned into somewhat of a fiasco or a cluster, I have to say. Um, I would be very wary. I mean, that is, in my mind, it's outside the practice of, of standard emergency medicine to provide intubation and extubation in the ED for procedural sedation or other things. Other people may differ. A lot of these ideas sound great on the front end, but then not so much when you're in it. It's kind of like med war. I want to do med war, and then about five miles in, you're like, mm, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I, think that, I think that if you intubated this patient, nobody would fault you. But remember, we're going back into some of the stuff we just spent 20 minutes talking about. You know, the lady is protecting her airway. She actually didn't look that bad despite what her labs look like, despite the fact that she's coughing, that she's vomiting up bright red blood. And those guys, I mean, she, she looked clinically well. If you intubated that patient, I think that's totally fine. And I don't think anybody would fault you for that. Um, in terms of intubation and, um, and extubation in the emergency department, again, I mean, it's a case-by-case -case thing. I prefer to avoid that. Have I done it? Yeah, I've done it three or four times. I, but I try to avoid it. The one that comes to mind was a native hip and a trauma patient who had an iffy blood pressure. So we resuscitated her, just uncomfortable with the whole situation. So I called ortho, and we, when we paralyzed her, we had him go ahead and click the hip in, <laughs> and, then, uh, and then put the tube in, and we did not continue any further sedation. We let her wake back. And Rich has more intestinal fortitude than myself. I, my only area that I, I even consider the ED extubation is that violent trauma patient that got tubed um, to get the imaging and then it's found out to be fine and just drunk and then consider extubation with that. Even that's super risky and is probably a sign of an inefficient healthcare system that didn't get them to the shock trauma ICU quicker. Um, but maybe a stopgap thing that we're going to see more and more is the ICU stack up. Um, but it is probably going to creep in with that. I think the people that we're talking about tubing to, to do a procedure on are the very folks that most need the OR. And it's not just the extubation that's risky because it's outside the standard of care to intubate somebody for a sedation mm -hmm. or, or for a procedure. Right. And so, it, it, you know, I, I wouldn't worry so much about the extubation as what's going to happen if you ever have a problem doing it because a lot of people are going to come out of the woodwork against you. Everybody within your anesthesia department <laughs> is going to say you do not do that. So to me, if you have... The hip, for instance, I think you can cover yourself a little bit by just making a quick call to anesthesia and saying, can you get this guy to the OR within 30 minutes, 45 minutes, so that it can be put back in? I think, feel like he needs to be intubated to get his hip back in. If they say no, then you're able to chart. I made an attempt to get this guy to the operating room. It's a native hip. Um, I discussed it with ortho and anesthesia. I, I don't think you're going to get in trouble in a situation like that.